Pass me not. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Let me at the throne of mercy find the sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Trusting only in thy merit, would I seek thy face. Heal my wounded, broken spirit, save me by thy grace. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Amen. God bless you. We've decided before looking into David's failure with Bathsheba that we would give some good news, a gospel message, and so we hope you find it edifying. Amen. So we'll go ahead and, and, and pray together, shall we? Our God and our Father, we uh, thank you for this opportunity to be together uh, on this uh, technology uh, that you have allowed us to use for your glory. We are about to open the Word of God. We know how serious this is because it is the Word of God. So help us, we pray. Help us to have uh, listening ears and obedient hearts. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll begin reading in Mark 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he, the Lord Jesus, went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried out the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49, And Jesus stood still, and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good cheer, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Praise the Lord. So if you remember, if you've read any in the Old Testament, uh, when the nation Israel, which had come out of Egypt, and they had uh, wandered in the desert for 40 years, they crossed the Jordan River into Canaan. And the first enemy city that they came to was Jericho. Remember, Jericho is where they marched around the city, and God brought the walls of the city down, and they had a great victory. It's very significant. Jericho, the name of the city, means sweet fragrance. So it really represents the world, the world system. A world without God. A world that is contrary to Christ. A world without faith. 
a world under the power of sin and Satan. Because that's what these Canaanites represented. And that's why God sent his people into what was the promised land. It was Emmanuel's land. It was God's land to uh, remove these unbelievers from the land. They were very wicked. They sacrificed their sons and daughters in sacrifice. They were immoral and corrupt. But the name Jericho means sweet fragrance. And so it reminds me of uh, the city Las Vegas. Uh, I remember many years ago when I was unsaved, Las Vegas, that city of sweet fragrance, I thought, I flew in a jet airplane from Los Angeles to Las Vegas with a friend of mine. And six hours later, we were hitchhiking back from Las Vegas uh, to Los Angeles. In the cold, a winter night, short pants, sandals, we had lost our money. And so the sweet fragrance of Las Vegas had brought us to great sorrow. And there we were hitchhiking on a dark highway trying to get home. But you know, this is the world. This is the world system. It promises much. But in the end, when you check your pockets, it's like they have holes in your pocket. You come with nothing. You lose everything. And so here the Lord Jesus symbolically has come to this place that uh, offers everything as the devil offers everything to sinful men and women. But he's a liar and the father of lies. And he never... He never gives what he promises he will. It always turns to bondage for men and women that listen to him. And I was in bondage to sin. And I thank God for the deliverance that Jesus Christ gave me. Because I was like blind Bartimaeus. I couldn't see the truth. I couldn't see that uh, what Las Vegas represented was something that was just corrupt my soul and my mind and my life. It wasn't something that would be beneficial to me. I was blind to it. And not only will uh, the world leave you blinded where you can't see the wonderment of God, but you'll be a beggar. See, Bartimaeus was a beggar. He's along the roadside. And he has nothing. And he's left as a beggar. And that's the way... The devil will use up someone's life and he'll kick you to the side just to be a beggar. Where uh, and You know many men and women that have lost their everything, including their minds, using drugs and alcohol. And they sit on the roadside and they're begging. It is so, so sorrowful and so unnecessary. And God is speaking to you tonight because he does not want that to come upon you. He wants to open your eyes that you might see sin as it really is and the destructive power of sin. That you might, that he might fill your heart with the treasures of God. And so here's Bartimaeus. And the Lord walks by him. Now remember, the Lord has an appointment with him. Every time that you read in the Bible about the Lord Jesus meeting with some particular sinner, you can know that he came from heaven because he had an appointment with that person. And I want to tell you tonight, Jesus Christ has an appointment with you. And that's wonderful. He came all the way from heaven's glory because he loves you. And you have an appointment with him. That's why you were picked up, however long ago it was, so that you could be here tonight and Jesus Christ could pass by as he does with Bartimaeus through the word of God. And so, Bart, and so Bartimaeus is by the uh, highway begging, verse 47. So I just was reminded of me 
you know, hitchhiking along the roadside, a beggar. And uh, verse 47, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. So Bartimaeus had heard of Jesus. And you know what's the sad thing? Is people can become so discouraged and so disheartened by sin, so blinded to the truth of God's love, uh, so destitute of anything that's good. They've lost their family, lost everything. That they can't believe that God loves them. They can't believe that God would reach out to them. And so they don't turn to him. But I want to tell you tonight, God has not given up on you, though you might have given up on yourself. Everyone else had given up on blind Bartimaeus. No one else cared for him, but Jesus cared for him. Hallelujah. And as he passed by, Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus and hope sprung up in his heart because he had heard that Jesus had healed the blind. He had heard that Jesus had multiplied the loaves and fishes. He had heard that the Lord Jesus had raised the dead. If he had any, hope, any chance of recovery, it was now. And he would not let this moment pass by. And so he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Well, what did people do? Look what it says in verse 38. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. In other words, be quiet. So the enemy will always place an obstacle in your pathway. Christ comes near you. You feel that maybe, maybe you should turn to him. Maybe there's still a chance. And then there'll be a whisper from maybe one of the homeboys or homegirls or something that will discourage you. Something that will tell you you're not worth it. God will not waste his time on you. And it's a lie. Just like these people right here. They told him to be quiet. Who are you, Bartimaeus? You're just a blind beggar. They had no concern for him. But I want to tell you tonight, you cannot be saved if you're not desperate. And Bartimaeus was desperate. You have to be desperate that your soul will be saved. This is your hour. This is your moment. You've got to come to Christ in desperation because he comes to you. You sense the desperation that Bartimaeus has as he fears that Jesus might pass by. And you should fear that too, because tonight you have an opportunity to cry out to the Lord for mercy. Others might tell you to be quiet. Others might tell you you have no hope. But don't believe it. Jesus comes to you tonight because he loves you. Hallelujah. And so what did Bartimaeus do? When they told him to be quiet, he cried out all the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. You see, that's what I mean by desperation. He'll not, not be turned to the left or right. He won't let people uh, distract him. He has a, a, a terrible need. He's blind. He's a beggar. The world has given him nothing but destruction and sorrow and misery. And he's not going to listen anymore. And you should determine within your heart tonight you will not listen to the homeboys anymore. Not listen to the homegirls. That you will turn away from that false uh, philosophy of men that you can be happy without God, that you can make something, uh, something of your life without God. It will not happen. It's a lie. And so Bartimaeus, he's desperate. Please, Lord Jesus, don't pass me by. Please, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Verse 49, I want you to look at this verse. Look at this verse, verse 49. And Jesus stood still. Praise the Lord. You can have absolute assurance that if the Lord Jesus came for blind Bartimaeus, he'll come for you. If he has mercy for blind Bartimaeus, he has mercy for you. But you've got to cry out from your heart. In this moment, you need to cry out from your heart. Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. He'll hear that prayer. Oh, he won't hear the prayer that, you know, when you're just uh, making a deal with God. No, you've got to be desperate. You've got to see that you're heading for hell and you've got no hope. You've got to cry out 
uh, for mercy, and he will show you mercy. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus stood still. The voice of Bartimaeus stopped him, because after all, he has an appointment with this man. Hallelujah. And so Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. What a message! How this must have thrilled Bartimaeus. How many times people had passed by when he had his cup and he's holding it out. And they laughed at him, made fun of him. They didn't put anything in his cup. They left him just as poor as he was. Only now he's broken hearted. He's used to be people mocking him, making fun of him, looking down upon him. And so he would not have been surprised if Jesus had walked on by, I'm sure. So when the message came that Jesus called for him, oh my, yeah, we cannot even imagine the thrill that filled his heart and mind that someone as important as the Lord Jesus would call upon him. So you know what he did? You know, he's a poor beggar. All he has is what's on his back. And it says in verse uh, 50, And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. What are you holding on to tonight? What are you holding on to? What is it that you value? What is it that's keeping you from coming to Christ? Something that, uh, like a garment, it's all you have and you won't give it up. Listen, my friend, there's nothing worth Nothing in this world that's worth losing your soul over. Cast that thing aside. It might be re some relationship. You're unmarried and you're, and you're living in fornication. You know, whatever it might be, cast that thing aside. Cast that cloak aside as Bartimaeus did. And don't let anything restrain you from coming to Christ. Praise the Lord. This is your moment. You're not promised tomorrow. This is your accepted time. And so, <clears throat> in verse 51, Jesus answered and said unto him, What will that I should do unto thee? You see, the Lord Jesus wants to hear from your heart. He wants you to unload what's in your heart. All the pain, all the sorrow, all your brokenness, he wants to hear from you. He's listening now. He knows what's in your heart, but that's not enough. He wants you to express it to him. He wants you to, by faith, recognize that he is the one that you can cast your cares upon because he cares for you. And he proved it at the cross when he died for your sins. He wants proof that you believe in him. He wants a real prayer of faith, not some remembering some prayer you learned when you were in church or a little boy or girl. No, no, something from your heart to crying out saying, oh God, I made my life into misery. I've hurt so many people. I don't deserve salvation. I don't deserve help. I've lost everything. I have no place to turn but to thee, and I turn to thee now believing that only help can come from thee. Whatever your prayer might be, it's got to be in desperation and it needs to be now. So there is Bartimaeus. He's cast his cloak aside. He's not holding on to anything. He has nothing, nothing in this world except his hope in Christ. Right, Bartimaeus first said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith, has made thee whole. What do you mean thy faith? It was faith in Christ. That's what the Bible teaches from beginning to end. Faith in Christ. It's not enough to believe in God. You've got to believe God. You've got to believe his testimony that he's given concerning his son. Concerning Christ at the cross of Calvary. Concerning his suffering for our sins and rising again the third day. That he is Lord now in heaven. God wants us to believe God, not just to believe in God, but to believe his testimony regarding his son. And the Lord Jesus said, your faith has made thee whole. 
because you believed in me, because you cast everything aside, because you wouldn't let anyone stand or anything stand in your way of coming to me. You know that I'm the answer for every need that you have. Your faith has made you whole. And at that moment, he looked, Bartimaeus, who couldn't see, he was in darkness, and he looked upon the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first face he had ever seen, and he saw the face of Jesus. Can you imagine the compassion in the Lord's eyes as Bartimaeus' eyes met his? And you need to know tonight that compassion can be yours. He wants to open your eyes so that you'll see that you're living in darkness, that you've turned away from God who is the truth and the light, and that the devil's lies will continue to bring you into darkness and to poverty. You'll be stripped of everything. Some of you may have already lost your families, lost your wives, lost your children, lost your job. I don't know what all of you have lost. I know you've lost your freedom. And the Lord Jesus says, by believing in me, your faith, look what he says, has made thee whole. Not just that he can see, not just that you can see, Bartimaeus, but I've made you whole. I've made you complete. You see, that's what a man is. When he knows Christ, he's complete. And it'll always be incomplete without Christ because God created you in such a way that only he, only he can satisfy the needs of your heart. Bartimaeus, I've made you whole. You're a complete man. And if you want to be a complete man tonight, you need to receive Christ. But you need to come to him in desperation. You need to recognize you're blind and you can't see. That you're in this situation you're in because of your blindness. You've stumbled and you've fumbled, fumbled and you've lost everything because you thought you knew where you were going and you had no idea. You were blind and now you're poor. And in that poverty, Jesus comes to you. And he's passing by as he did Bartimaeus. Don't let anything stand in your way. Don't let the devil tell you any lie. You come to Christ tonight. Only he can make you whole. And then we see what Bartimaeus did. What every believer in Christ will always do. At the end of verse 52, And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. What does it mean he followed him in the way? He followed him in the way that Jesus went. See, there's the way of the world. It's away from God. And then there's walking with Jesus Christ, the pathway of righteousness, to walk with the Savior, then the Savior to walk with you. There is nothing that compares to it. Nothing in this world compares to knowing Christ, living for Christ, walking with him, walking in the way that he would have you to walk. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. My friends, listen. The decision is yours and faith is a decision. But if you can relate to Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus the beggar, as I can, I know that's how I got saved. 1978, I was desperate for God desperate in my sin, blinded in a, and, and stripped of all value. Everything that I treasured was gone. And Jesus Christ passed by. And I cried out. I said, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. And he showed me mercy all those years ago. And since then, no, though not perfectly, by any means, but I've followed him in the way. And by his grace, I'll never go any other way, but in his way. Let's pray. Our God, we pray for each man here tonight. We pray just as we've seen the desperation that was in Bartimaeus's heart and mind, that this was his one opportunity to be saved, to be healed, to be made whole, that my friend that you might recognize tonight, this is your night, this is your opportunity. You can be made whole, a whole man, 
because Jesus Christ and he alone can bring you to God so that you can be complete. Come to Christ. Cry out in your heart now for mercy. He will show you mercy, abundant mercy and salvation. And it'll open your eyes that you might be able to see the wonders of God's love and God's kindness. And that you might follow Jesus Christ in the way. You might tell your family, your friends, and everyone you come in contact with that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.